Sky Theatre presents All You Can Do Is Breathe by Ken Aneron Warren. Stuart lay trapped on the ground for five days before the tall man appeared and stared in his eyes. He thought he sensed movement flickered on his light. Barry, did you make it through the wall? But there was no one. There was something, though, in his face to so close. He pulled back and banged his head on the rock behind. He shouted his wife open, squeezed his eyes shut. He never felt such terror, not even when his daughter had fallen in the pool and didn't notice for God knows how long. This was a man, something like a man, tall and low-gunted, a thing looked deep in his eyes. He reached out and almost took his chin with his bony fingers, keeping his head still, paralyzing him, even though he didn't actually he wasn't actually touching him. Choke a smell of sour cherries. Something like that. It made him hungry. The hunger always beat out the terror. He pulled his head backwards. A man nodded, stepped back and was gone. A minute, a minute or two, Stuart was sure. He imagined it. Though he had no ears in his ears. See you soon, Stuart. He was sure he heard those words. He felt that the walls were getting closer, but he kept testing by stretching his arms and distance was the same. By the time he was working, had collapsed so quickly, it seemed like time stopped and froze. He started up again. He was surrounded all, by all sides by rock. But his workmate was the other side, we heard nothing from him for twelve hours now. Thank God for the luminous hand of his watch. The children gave it to him for Father's Day for years ago. Gave it at the time he'd been thrilled. He didn't always get that with Father Day's presence. Wasn't that what be, you call what workers watch? Full of gadgets like the watches of office men. Drove to work each day, passing him. He stood cold and dark. A bus stop with the old miners. A car blinked with gadgets. His watch kept perfect time, followed a date and hand, provided a green glow in the back black. At home he had kept it in his side drawer at night, because the light kept his wife awake. But he could soon see the thin grey line across the top of the drawer where the light escaped. Since the walls came down, he slept sporadically, waking a couple of times, thinking he was at home in bed because of the glow. He covered it up with his lunchbox. Only a small lion escaped. He had his campfire light, but he didn't, really didn't want to use that. Been mining with screws lasting two weeks, and he wanted to know he could still have bright light if he needed it to. He knew they wouldn't give up. He knew they wouldn't give up. They never let the body on the ground. Mostly because they didn't want it found much later. He had his GPS so they knew where he was. You could see Barry's blip too. It didn't mean he was still going. Just his GPS. Stuart stretched his legs and arms out and counting to a hundred. His wife was always on his back to him to do more exercise. She was pleased to see him do this. He walked and had food and run out on the third day. He knew it was no, making no sense keeping the food. Just go off and make him sick. Some gritty, gritty water dripped down the wall, licking it made his tongue ache. So cold it wasn't enough of it. He pissed in his water bottle and knew that drinking, it wouldn't kill him. He pretended it was called lime coral and stowing stuff, not the sweet. Food wise, he knew he couldn't last out for a while. He didn't, couldn't help the hunger pains. Luckily, his wife packed him heaps, of, and there was Barry's lunch as well. I stood outside the wall where Barry couldn't get to it. He tried moving the, the rocks, but it just caused more of a tumble. No more that uh, we took the rocks from. He wanted to keep trying, but his instincts told him just to leave it. Bugs scattered about, he could eat them. The strap of his lunchbox was leather, he chewed on that. Just making jokes, he's about as good as his wife's coming to the Lord's roast dinner. He got, if he got out, he'd make that joke, and people would write it up. His sister Law would be famous for bad cooking. Stuart tried to sleep, when he figured it was not, it was night time outside. To keep the notice in going, it was hard without a change of light, but an empty stomach. He didn't done any, hadn't, done anything to wear himself out. He usually dropped in bed after a shift of feed, exhausted. 
On Saturday, he hadn't been in the same. It had been in mine. He and his wife might have sex. But it wasn't something he might have thought about much. He thought about it now. But at the time, his eyes closed. But he tried not to think about the dark. He said he went through football matches he remembered. Seven days before they found him, nowhere near the record, but enough to get have a visa frenzy going on. As they're getting close, they managed to get a tube through to him, sent him notes from his wife and daughter, bags of glucose. They dropped some biscuits too, down too. I was hoping for hot meat pie, he called up by the tube. He could talk with his mouth closed to the tube, tell them shit he wanted the family to know, tell them all the jokes he thought up while he was down there. Nothing worse than a joke without an audience. They call questions down like, Are you scared? No, I'm not scared. I'm fearless. Nothing scares me. He asked about Barry, and they said they were working on it. Enough ever since an old man visited him, Stuart had his bad feeling about Barry. He perhaps thought, thought perhaps that with Barry's ghost, he felt bad about screaming. He wished he said, Good day, mate. Whatever. Outcast me when they pulled him out, but still far woman than inside the mine. It meant he didn't have to squint because of the sun. His wife Cheryl was there, his daughter Sarah. For a long time he couldn't talk. He just held him and cried. He never actually cried before, not since. He was a little kid, anyway. But it is, he couldn't help. He thought he'd never seen him again, and he loved them, loved them hard. Sarah looked so beautiful, so grown up for 13 years, and around the imaginary future, his distant, darkest times like ours, for the long man had disappeared. He felt like giving up. He imagined her future, who she'd be, what she'd do, where she, who she'd marry, what her kids would be like, would look like. He dreamed it all in case he didn't see it. And now there she was. The rescuers were there too, none of them keen to go home. Dirty Face all said he couldn't believe how happy they were to see him. He knew he'd have to live well every day of his life to justify what they'd done. Where's Barry? Did you get him out yet? He asked, one of the, asked once as he had a warm drink. They loaded him into an ambulance, and oh, he said he felt fine. There, there, is, there hasn't got, haven't got Barry yet, she always said. But her eyes are downcast. She knew that she's fibbing. He didn't go and do it very often. He thought only to protect him. By the time half the mine was shut and down, and the wives knew about it first, the time Sarah had broken her arm because of the kid next door, she didn't want to tell him that because he knew how angry he'd be. He didn't do anything about it. The kid was never allowed in the front door again. But that was it. I rather know what that not I rather know and not know, he said. There were news, cameras, people, microphones and others with night books. What do you think how why do you think you survived? they shouted at him. Why are you not Barry? Tears took again as that and Cheryl squeezed his hand hard. The Ams crew shut the door. It was then a week of hospital before he had to go face the questions again. They told him about Barry once they thought of their good or good. Barry had been trapped, his leg under the rocks. Stuart could imagine how bad that must have felt. So Barry tried to cut his way through. Jesus cut his way through his own leg. They said he bled to death. You wrote you wrote for something you something while he was down there, she said. He was always scribbling that, that Barry. He wrote a letter to the Pope if he could get the address. So it said it was an old joke which made him tear up. Thinking about Barry have, would have laughed at this one. He was hallucinating, they reckon, but still you could read it. I thought you'd got through the wall, Stu. I didn't hear you, but I heard a rock shift, so I thought you must be my, my left. You w- w- wouldn't answer me, so I c- cracked the sl- shits. I then turned my body, I turned my face as far as I could, twisted my clamprant around to catch you. I figured you wanted to kill and eat me. That's how stupid I was, wasn't I, you? My light was right through this thing. 
I could see it, though. It looked almost like a man, but stretched out like a piece of bubblegum or something. I went in your blue, red, blue tack into the paper and get some print and stretch it out like that. He had long fingers, twice as long as mine. Don't know if you heard me scream. This thing freaked me out. It came for me. I could have pissed myself if I was already sitting in my own wet pants. I leaned forward and put my eyes, eyes close to me, all close to mine. Stared at me. I screamed my head off. No reason, just scared shitless. Came to me, touched my nose with long finger, and it shook its head and drifted back. I, though, shit. It's going to stew. I scream louder. I wanted to warn you. But how do you, what do you do? I don't know what to tell you. I know if I had lost anything they, till they found me. Till my mate said, to be proud. And if you can, by my mother, tell them I'm sorry. Do you know anything about this long man, Stuart? Do you hear anything? See anything? My wife asked him. Stuart added, he looked, spoke silently, quietly. Some man like that. I thought he was just imagining it. Maybe it was a ghost. Maybe someone died in there. He was looking for us. Going, you're not make, going to make it. No way. You're going to die. Because you made me so, feel so bad. I wanted to die. That's awful, Stuart. We're so, got, we're so lucky to have you back. He kissed her so he did have any chance he got. Maybe he'd keep it to his, between us now. What is this? about this young young man our people wouldn't understand it don't tell the media types okay you think I'm crazy no I don't but I know that you and they don't but I know you they don't just keep your mind my, to the simple stuff hey shouldn't be hard for you Discovered he was good at talking, Cheryl. But it's funny. You're a governor now, Stuart. Don't get, can't get ten words a day out of you, Balfour. He fixed his hair, getting him ready for the next press conference. Yeah, well, you're always asking me for answers, he said. He didn't mind, it was always the same thing. He didn't have to think it too hard. This one room was packed. They knew he was awfully recovered, fully covered. And some others... Uh, had some others talk too. The mine owner, who Stuart never met, one of his whiskers, a, 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 a doctor, a psychologist, he had good to go to the mine over for a while about responsibilities and conversation. They turned to Stuart. Do you always think you'll be found? I always expected you found. It's a bit like I expected I'm going to be good luck, get good luck. Just that kind of person, my credit goes to the rescuers. Though I couldn't believe those guys, still can't believe. When they did, when they did, we be friends for life because of it. The rescuers next to him, trapped to his, on his hand, on his hand on his shoulder. Was there any time you wanted to give up? He waited, fought for long, the grown grey man, fears of pair he left behind. You wouldn't believe him if he talked about that, think, if he talked about that, think he was mad. No, I just thought my wife's rock pot roast and that would have got me through. Why? Is it... What is it you got? Why did you survive and not bury? I can't answer that. The further circus has stepped in. Oh, there are many reasons why people survive. For Stuart, he had faults of his family sustaining him. Barry did not have that. Studies have shown it makes a difference. Also, Stuart, less dramatic in his actions. Maybe he's thought ahead of a bit more. And maybe Barry thought he could get out of it. You're saying it's Barry's fault he was trapped? His own fault he died? No, not at all. But the fact is that Stuart thought it through and trusted the rescuers. Do you think yourself lucky, Stuart? Couldn't be more, be luckier. Stuart said, I'm the luckiest man to left alive. I saw your rescues would be happy to hear. I saw you happy your rescues sure your rescues would be happy to hear that. Do you feel any sense of obligation to them? Do you own them own them anything? Yeah, look. They're all spread out around the place. They all come to my place for to feed any time. They like you know, what I really own them. I own them a, a good life. 
He and the dresser shook hands and cheering into the audience went on for two minutes. What do you say to the idea that some people don't survive because they may have died helping others? Yeah, well, well it could have, if I could have helped Barry survive, I would have. What about his food? Is it true you ate his food? Yeah, I ate his food. Couldn't get to it. And it was all the only thing it was only going off. That's not what not, that's not what killed him, the psychologist said. It is true that often the survivors don't help us. Others, especially in times of famine, survivors are the ones who take food from a child's mouth. Sure, it felt shunned. He wasn't sure how the conversation turned against him and what a hero he was, but it seemed it had. Oh, I didn't survive, he said. No, I had to die. For me to survive, I did it because I loved my family, loved my life. I wanted to get there for TV, free bar I uh, heard about. What about with that? He had the audience back. Others, there were plenty of beer drunk. The crew took him out to a local pub. He was there long or they left. People watched the interview. They all wanted to talk to him about it. If only we could bottle what you'd done. There'd be no more kiddies dying of cancer, people said to him more than he wanted to hear. If only we could bottle it. You'd be a rich man. But he could, if only we could bottle it, it would save the world. The thought was he had some, he had some magical power. It was not a willingness to drink your own piss, a great desire to have proper sex with your wife again. It's something else, something they couldn't have. He took drink well, even he was feeling a bit woozy by already midnight. By 3am the pint pub was almost empty. He could no longer remember who he spoke to. So when the sad-faced man said hello, he nodded and went back to his beer. Hello, Stuart, the man said again. His voice was soft. It was a amused tone. But he knew more than any other His amused tones, if he knew more than other people found something amusing. Pierre no longer wondered how people knew his name. Pain of them did. He rather liked it so loudly. He always enjoyed making connections with people over. Stuart looked at him this, him this time. Do you know? Do I know you? He asked. Very right, toy for bright, white and even. Cheerily false, his hair, pale blonde, that flattened his head, he smelt strongly of aftershave. Kind of Stuart used to smell, wafting out the cars when he waited for the bus. His mouth dropped. Sad man, Stuart thought. Are you okay? Are you holding up? I'm okay, a bit tired. Man moved, so he looked directly in Stuart's eyes. Stuart froze. This was how the operation, the cave had looked at him with his intensity. He used to people staring at him greedily, but this was different. A sad face, the long arms, long, long fingers. It was apparition from the mine. A man's hand went up and hand out and grabbed Stuart by the wrist. Powerful grip. Hold still, Stuart. This won't take long. Stuart shivered, feeling as cold as he had gone around. Chills of the bone and dreaming snow. Let go, matey, would ya? He said. He tried to pull back, but he felt deeply lethargy. And he'd been rejected with golden syrup, his limbs wouldn't, couldn't move. Man raised his other arm and brought it up to pinch the bridge with Stuart's nose. Stuart was paralysed. He wanted one of the other drinkers to intervene. Hit the man, knock him away, but no one did. It was so quiet, Stuart felt as if he was got back in the mine. Dear made him choke. No, it wasn't that. He had a nosebleed, dirt blood pouring backwards down his throat because the man held his sinuses to so diet. He let go and Stuart slumped forward, spitting blood. He kept movement. He felt movement return. He turned his head away for the minute main. A man bent and helped him. Nosebleed, nosebleed. We can come rid of room. I'll take him and clean him up. Nosebleed, it'll be fine. Stuart tried to pull his arm away. His mouth was full of blood. Come on, Stuart, it'll be all right. He led Stuart into the man's toilet, popped him against the room, propped him against the wall. Stuart heard a scraping green sound. A cockroach is across the kitchen. Bench at night. He thought he smelled a whiff of them. That slight predecessive smell. A smell of sour joys. 
You're not alone, uh, Stuart said. The man said, Stuart felt the creatures, and by strange eyes could watch them walking up his arms, scream his head, defend him. Up in his biceps, his fore, but up on his forearm, his biceps, over his shoulders, and onto his neck, where he could feel them latching on. It's not your blood they're taking, the man said. His voice was soft and almost too broad to listen to. It's something else you were you wouldn't miss. Smell of trays. I don't know. It won't hurt, the man said. Stuart heard a scuttering sound like cockroaches across his kitchen bench at midnight. He thought he could call away for them. That slightly paisley, pa- plastically smell. Smell of sour cherries. It won't hurt, the man said. Stuart felt the creature step by, straining his eyes. He could watch him walking up his arm, a scream, oh, and his head deafened him. Up to his forearm, his biceps, over his shoulders, onto his neck, where he could feel them latching on. It's not your blood they're taking, the man said. His voice was soft and almost too broad to listen to. Something else, you won't miss it. Be like he was never there. You won't know. He clicked his tongue, a shirt of footless, footless stuck and stopped. He felt light headed and nauseous. A man plucked a bait on Stuart's shoulder and ate it, crunched it like it. It was a nut and took the next. Two more, he's snacking his lips. Stuart couldn't move. He felt so cold. He felt like he'd been buried in snow or he's back in a cave. But his light in here, very bright. Look at me. The man's cheeks were pink and his eyes bright. He looked hap- younger, happier. Thank you, Stuart. Have a good life. He touched her on his head, and Stuart slept. He woke on the filthy toilet floor. Someone had dropped a wad of shitty toilet paper. He would smell. He could smell it, and he felt a little com- compunctured, rise to lift himself. It was like this was the only moment he, there was beyond nothing beyond. The other man came and helped him up. Home time for you, mate. Wait, right there, why take a piss? I'll get you a taxi. I don't know, you used to it said things seem blurred. You can't remember much. Nah, but it always helps somebody in trouble. Right? Especially a survivor like you. I am a survivor, thought Sarah thought. As a stranger helped him out to taxi. That's what I did. But he, was, but he felt as he could never do it again. Woke up on his lounge floor, room floor, he shut off his with dry blood. Big night, was it? Cheryl said, poking him with a toe. Cheryl stood over him, spread for school, and Cheryl's all shined, and white socks folded neatly. He shivered, looking in cold. The old man pinched my nose, his face swollen. He knew he might must look awful. Get off the floor, she said. He was shivering. I will soon, he tried, felt a deep sense of pure lethargy. Cheryl helped him onto the couch and brought him a cup of tea. You ain't you too old to drink like that any more. Wasn't a drink. Well, I didn't I did give a bit of the hiding, but it was a, a guy, this long grey guy who gave me a bloody nose and then did something to me. I tired so tired and cold. He brought him a fluffy pink blanket and comforted his knees a bit. TV producers went and sent over a copy of your interview. Sarah, I've already watched it twice. Well, have a look. You've come across really well. Couldn't wait for his answer, but played a DVD anyway. He watched the interview over and over that day, wondering at the person talking. Jeez, I'm a smart ass, aren't I? She said, smiling at Cheryl. She kissed his forehead. You always were, and the lightness of her tone warmed him slightly. He had suffered priest and depression. He had suffered terrified. Every day he would c- come on again. He saw it through her eyes sometimes, and it drooped her mouth, lost his sadness. There were times he felt ha- tried harder, lift her up. But the corner of his eye, he thought he would saw a bear climbing the wall, curled up, putting a blanket over his eyes. We need to get the grunt. To kill guys in here. Get rid of the truck roaches, he said. She added, ants too. All over the kitchen, rotten little things. She sat beside him, laying her head on his shoulder. I still can't believe you're back. He said, his little bird is sparrow, but a tower of strength at the same time. Usually sitting beside him, he felt 
something irritation often he just went on about small domestic details none of them interested him boredom talking about his family affection they saw together watching tv love when he laughed about a joke he made when home the eyes crinkled up and little tears formed he loved those little tears he held his hands he laid it loose are you okay he said i just can't really feel anything it's all gone numb he said to him we don't know. We just have to tell the doctor something's wrong. You shouldn't feel like that. I don't feel anything, love. That's the thing. Nothing at all. Just cold. Like I got an ice block inside my stomach. Didn't tell her he meant emotionally as well. And looking at her left him cold. Go up. He kissed her. Usually they do this stuff at night. And the door closed. Then he kissed her with passion. Moved his hands around her body. Touching all his favourite bits. Weeks past, he ate meals he had no real desire to eat. Weeks past, he ate meals no real desire to eat. Had conversations, many, many interviews. Sponsorship brought money in, newspaper reports. They said everything he'd eaten on the ground. Those people approached him. His vinegar maker might tip top bread milo chocolate bars or apples local fruit shop took them on that one local butcher had to go too watch company put him on the tv talking about how he would never need another watch one was so good so at least he didn't have to work people would ask him if he was going back underground he'd bluff at them give them the real man answer hero stuff he wasn't going back he spent a lot of time reading the paper. He started cutting out stories of the survivors, especially the ones who talked about the cold, but a deep bone chill they felt after a few days. Dad, let me hook you up with this online forum. You can meet other survivors, talk to them. Most of them are probably feeling what you're feeling, Sarah said. She sat on the computer for a while, but it only made sense. He just talked to him through it. He didn't want her to know it all. He asked him about the long man. One you said pinched your nose. Couldn't we should try to track him down. Make sure he doesn't do it again. People go can't go around pinching my dad's nose like that. Willing and he said it was an old joke. I don't know if he'll find him. I don't think he's at the pub much. Or if he's got a job. I saw him when he was but I buried, you know. He said a ghost in to find me. I would have talked about seeing visions, buried in the snow, caught in a car, or two days on the country road. I said more than one of them. The long man has visited him. It's just, it was just, it wasn't, it's not just me, he told Sarah. No one knows why he doesn't help. He just looks. Did he pinch their nose? This is stuff we can find online, Dad. Yeah, maybe, maybe. What about stuff about cockroaches? How to get rid of them? I saw a huge one in the Newton boat room. They say they survive a nuclear war. That's what they reckon, he shivered. I hate them. He's like a fraud. Life is ordered him. All the people wanting what he had Cheryl Sarah not nothing got nothing but harassment lucky your dad's alive your husband people said to them imagine what life you had been like without him how sad how hard making him think about it all these people wanted to talk to him they paid him at least he kept them in beer and roast beef perhaps always the same questions what did you, do you think when you were kept alive for he asked putting in honest on him to make something of his life as he'd been given a second chance, he'd be a fool to waste it. Don't know what I've kept alive for. <clears throat> I'm mostly enjoying every minute with my daughter and my wife, is his stopped answer. But they didn't really... But he no, no longer really cared. They asked him, are you scared of anything? Seems like you're not. It's a stupid question, he thought. Who isn't scared? Cockroaches. I really hate cockroaches. He was sighed in an agreement. Now the question that always asked him was, put in the same situation, would you or could you do it again? Well, I wouldn't, mate, would I? It's not just going to happen. They always ended with, if only you could bottle it. His standard joke was to hold out his wrist. You've got to take a litre or two? Go for it, I can spare it. It's all an act, and he was good at it.
You wait in the queue to buy fish and chips. Aren't, aren't you that guy, the, that minor guy? When he smelled smell of cherries, it took him straight back to the cave and smelled of the old man. He felt cold for his layers of clothing. He didn't want to turn around. He felt someone behind him. Close, but what? But people did that. They seemed to think if they got physically close to him, it was always some of him. They could be like him. He took his package of food and left the shop. Eyes down, climbed into the car. The sponsor had given him. Sat there to eat it. The old man opened the passage to the door and climbed in. Shirt dropped his food on his lap where he sat, greasing hot. He barely felt it. He scrambled for the door handle. The old man took his wrist. Pressed hard and Stuart couldn't move, just like the last time. You seem to join the fish, Stuart. You know what that tells me? You didn't. I, that doesn't. T- I didn't take it all. The fact that you want to eat tells me that. Stuart starts to shake his head to say, I'm faking it. It's all fake. I can't feel a fucking thing. But the cops riches were out, shuddering and sucking. He thought he was cold before. There was nothing. His eyelids felt frozen open. His nostrils frozen, shut. Breathing was so painful. He wanted to stop doing it. That's it now, the long man said, picking cockroach feelers out of his teeth. You're done. Joe slumped to the seat for a while, then started to car. A tape was playing one of his interviews. He liked listening to himself, hearing his own voice. I'll do anything to stay alive, anything to keep my family alive, heard himself say. You know, I got stuck in a pipe once on a fat kid. Fat kid. I was saying songs from TV shows to keep me occupied. Listen from his car, chilled to the bone and died. Sure wonder if he's seen the long man then. The long man had been waited. Waited till he's good and strong. Pulled out of the car park. Not any sense of duty making him do it long as stilled. He had no to go to school, visit someone had organised for him some school where, they had, where there was a survivor kid a young girl recently rescued it took him a while to get there wrong turns bad traffic angry traffic he thought there was the more road rage than usual but then wondered if it was his driving it's all that stuff about driving carefully but it didn't make sense because he didn't know didn't care he drove or what he hit We'd like to welcome Stuart Parker to the school. It'll take time out of a busy day to talk to us and take, talk to Claire, our own hero. She and Claire quietly. Stuart guess they were tired of hearing about Claire. She'd trapped in the basement of the building, gave her high seat gone wrong. No one knew she was playing. No one knew where she was. It took six days for her, to f- them to find her. Tell us how you cope, Claire, the teacher said. I tend to was at school doing boring work. and know why it was so boring. Sometimes I thought about this nice man of mine. He said he kept... He kept thinking of nice things. And that, that's what I did, too. Children shuffled. Started to talk. Bored. Claire looked at it and wide-eyed. I had bugs. Lots of bugs, like he did. I had the same... I had some chips. I took them from the cupboard. I didn't want to tell Mummy and Daddy, because I didn't want to get in trouble. And she's had the attention. But not completely. And then there was the creepy guy. You're alone in the basement, Claire. Wasn't you? The teacher said, passive-aggressive. No one was there. Did you see? What did you see? Stuart said. He hadn't had a chance to speak before then. What did he look like? The audience was rapid, rampant. Didn't often get to see adults this way. Or head up loud. I was all by myself, but then this creepy long guy was there. I'd seen him, never seen him before, but I thought this might help me get out. But he didn't. He just stared at me. I told him he should go away, but the only thing I think he said was, See you soon, Claire. That's why I was scared. I really didn't want to see him again. Stuart wanted to care. He wanted to leave her, save her, but there's nothing to left in him. I only remember the man who killed to save that girl. Would have ripped the arms of any man who tried to hurt her. Just a memory now. Stuart, we have heard from you. What can you tell the children? That there is no purpose in life. We all die and rot and none of it is worth anything. You're not taking my space. And that the long man is real. You need to keep her safe from him, because he'll destroy her. Principal stunned and speechless. Took a moment to answer. The children were silent. He wondered if he'd seen seeds of sadness and emptiness in them all. He didn't mean to. But he was too tired and cold to lie anywhere. 
But, Mr. Parker, you're wrong, madam. We ask you to lift the children and spy them. I'm nothing, nothing at all, he said. Fair Claire was in the news, and so was he with his awful statements, his cruelty to the children. He had the media at his door again, but they hated him now for turning on the children. You don't do that to the kiddies, do you? He watched Claire, she didn't look chilled to the bone. So he thought perhaps the long man didn't come to her yet. His house was full of his sponsors. Food and friends came over to eat, because it, he wouldn't. Some of the rescuers, too, looking at him as if they wasted their time, sitting there in front of the television, warm rug, warm slippers, all skinny and pale. He couldn't even fake a smile anymore. His famous watch had slipped off his wrist, and sat in the dust under the crouch. We should have bottled it. He could say, give him a taste of his own self. Well, the rescue said, he knew they were disappointed in him. He wasn't going, doing that, what they wanted him to do. Three days of my life I gave to save him. He heard one say in the kitchen, now look at him. They left him alone, and he didn't care.